Hello and welcome to Hacks, where we try to simplify cybersecurity. We are back on Hack This Site, looking at the realistic missions, and today we're looking at realistic mission number 11. Hack This Site is a website that allows you to test out and learn new hacking skills, and I highly recommend giving it a go if you haven't done so before. So, realistic mission number 11. I didn't really enjoy this one that much, and I think it's because part of it is broken and doesn't work anymore. Um, and it makes the actual challenge far easier than it should be. Uh, the part that's broken was actually the one part I was looking forward to. I digress. So, budget serve web hosting. The Space64 hacker community has been taken down by mind, not by, but not by mindless script kiddies, but by uptight network administrators. Help Space46 get his files back so he can restore the community and find a better host. Disclaimer, already completed this mission. Let's have a look. So we get a message from Space64 and it says, Hello, I'm Space64 from Space64.nod. Up until recently, BudgetServe used to be a good host, but the company got new owners and some lame hosted site was deleted. Somehow, the administrators think that it was me and they suspended my account. I've contacted them numerous times about getting my files back, but they refuse. As it so happens, I made a backup in my web route named source.tar.gz right before the account was suspended. Can you get this file back so I can move to a better host? Absolutely. You know, web hosts. Who do they think they are? Sounds like a dictator to me. So, if we navigate to the main page, we get a really basic looking ISP selling you the sort of standard hosting packages that you would see any hosting provider uh, main page features you can see there you got Linux Windows front page PHP MySQL Perl FAQ terms of service pricing $40 a month that's that's I suppose storage was a bit more expensive back then and webmail so if all is fast we can come back and we can try to brute force this but one thing that draws my attention right away is at the top, we've got this page.pl, which is a Perl script using the page parameter to call the various files in the, uh, in the application. What we can do is we can say to the page parameter that we don't want your page and we want to list out the contents of your directory instead. So we do a command OS, in, we do an OS command injection. And that allows us to list out the contents of the directory where the site is hosted. Now, as you can see there, we've got admin, base.dbase, client HTTP docs, and a bunch of other pages. It's good to make a note of these for later, so just grab them and pop them into your clipboard for the time being. And let's first take a look at the admin directory. So we can head over here, and we can see that it requires us to log in so we can try a basic SQL injection on there but it shouldn't work great fantastic so if we head back we can also see we got this dbase file that's something we need to remember for later that's a database file but we've also got this client HTTP docs now most web environments will have like a ht docs folder a http docs folder which is where you store your web pages it's the root of your web page directory so if we visit that we can see and they're all purple because i've already clicked on it that we got the parent directory which is space 46 which is the 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 hosting package that we're trying to recover the files for however if we click on it we get that the account is suspended and we we can't access the file for the url i've already tried but yeah, so there are other um, websites or web applications hosted on here, so we can have a look at those. We've got Wonder Diet. You too can be slim and it's so easy. Our product is so effective. You can eat whatever you want and not exercise. Don't believe me? Just look at the graph. So another sort of sham website, not much to it. You can click on order today and you can pop your information in there, but I couldn't really find much on this one. Um, then we've got Potato Works, which is currently under construction. From the potato works team I'm, I'm pretty eager to see what this site's going to be about and then we have the right 
Way Radio. Now, uh, just looking at this, looks very patriotic. It seems to be a radio site. And they've also got this message at the bottom that says, Sorry about the exceeded downtime, everyone, but some dim, com some damned commie hackers were trying to down the site and steal our identities again. Luckily, the good people at BudgetServe have improved our login scripts, and so now even we, uh, we, can, we can know what browsers they're using. Uh, if you'd like to see a small de demonstration of the script capabilities, click here. Keep strong, brothers. I can't speak today, uh, but this is the part of the challenge which was broken, and I'm really disappointed that it is because you can't do it and you no longer need to do it. Um, but essentially, if we look at the script, it's a page that's posting everybody's user agents into a HTML page. So you, we've already talked about user agents before and it's showing what sort of sites, what parts of their page they're visiting. So this person's posting to page equals mod. This person's posting to get. Now I've read somewhere that the intended purpose of this script was so that you could then change your user agent to a cross-site scripting attack which stole cookies. And then by hosting an external PHP page that steals cookies, on your own domain and having a file that it writes to by specify by putting a um, cross-site scripting attack into your user agent when somebody visits it visits that page their cookies get stolen and sent to you that allows you to then hijack their session and log in but we don't even need to do that anymore so if you see here it's been posted by R Smith and if we go to, if we click on his name, it takes us to his sort of profile page for this application. But you can also see here that it's a parameter at the top where it's page equals user info. So it's on user info and it's saying ID equals minus one. So we know his user ID is minus one. And all we need to do is we can modify this so we can go to one and that will give us a user called Fox underscore fighter. I believe there's a user four, if I'm not mistaken. Crusade gunner. Uh, but if we head over to zero, we get this. And zero is is good. Well, it says there it's an admin account. Now it, it gives you the ability to change their password. And bear in mind, we haven't pre-authenticated. We haven't stolen somebody's session. We've just found this by modifying the parameter in the URL. So it's a bit too easy. Um, and I would say it's absurd that you would see this on a web application. But I've seen some pretty absurd stuff on web applications. Accessing areas of an application you shouldn't be able to just by changing values like this um, So it's not out of the realm of possibility. It just makes this challenge way more simpler than it should be So all we have to do is we can just change this password to whatever we want to And click edit account And then we grab his username Throw it in the login box And log in As you can see, we're now logged in. Uh, you've got forums, you've got radio, you've got about, but you've also got this mod page at the top. And this mod page, and again, it's a little bit disappointing. I get it, it's a mod functionality, but I would have rather have performed a SQL injection than just been given a box to do SQL queries. But this is also broken. Now, I've watched a video, uh, I can't remember who it was from, but I will link it in the description of the video where they perform queries against the current database that it's linked to and they get results back however when i queried it i didn't get any results back but the application took ages to load now i've confirmed that my syntax is correct so it made me feel think that something was wrong with the application and i wasted ages trying to confirm that i had the correct syntax but if we take a look because it's sql light what we're trying to do is we want to query the master table to see what other tables are held within the database. So we've got a select or it should be select name actually from SQLite master. So that's the master table where the type of value, the type of imp like entry 
is equal to table. And if we submit the query, it will spin for a while and it will pretend it's doing something, but we won't get anything back. So it makes it a little bit, a bit blind to see what's actually happening. Um, we'll have to wait for it to finish. There we go. So we've got no results back. So I was scratching my head for a while, like what's going on? But if we change this a little bit and we just call it something like nothing and run it, Tell you what, let's put it back to uh, type equals table. Um, if we change this value instead, SQL DB, and we hit return on that, we should get an error at some point to say that the table that the that the database doesn't exist. But it doesn't even look like it wants to do that at the moment. I think whatever sanitization is going on to simulate. Uh, a database isn't really working that well. If we try it in names, there we go. It's failing to find the table, even though the database doesn't even. It's it's weird the way it's sanitizing the input. However, what we can do is if we inspect the page source, and we let's go back a page, inspect this. The good thing I do like about this is if you check this value down here, it's a hidden form value and it's a parameter called SQLDB and in that parameter is it's specifying the database. Now we know where the master database is, we saw it earlier it was uh, bs.dbase and it was in the root directory which we know is three directories up because we're in this directory of the right way radio and that's in client HTTP docs and we know that is one above that. So if we come in here and we escape three directories, I say escape, traverse three directories and we put in BSD base. If we get our query again and pop it back in here and submit the query well, that's interesting. Ah, I got all instead. So I need to do name. God, I shouldn't be a DB admin. That could have uh, really bad effects. So we run the query against the SQR master database where the type of value is table and we get one result, which is web hosting. So then what we can do is we can come back here and we can say select all from web underscore hosting and this should return all the contents of what's in web hosting so if we hit return on that we get a bunch of users now if we look at these users as well we can see we got the suspended account which is minus one part of the web package we got the user four which we found earlier we've also got user one which is wonder diet and we got their username and passwords but wonder diet is user one which is web package one which suggests it was the first account that was created. Uh, we also see that it's got an admin in the username. So perhaps this is the user that we can use to access the admin area. So if you copy all of the contents of the database into a file so that you have his username and password and then you head back to admin and try logging in with the user wonder diet. And you can tell what a, what a lovely person this is, as their password is, go away. Is their password is a uh, sucker every minute. I believe there's a saying about that, there's a sucker born every minute. So we can close the console now. We're not gonna save the password. And we can see here that we have a lot more functionality. We, got, uh, we have the ability to list files, delete files, upload files, create files, edit files, and download files. What we want to do is we want to download files. So if we click on that, you can see that it takes us to a HTML page, but it includes the full file path of what we're downloading. So we can see that we're downloading from client HTTP docs to wonderdiet index.html. And we know that the file we want to access is source.tar.gz. And based on the directory listings that we saw earlier, 
we also know that the directory we want to access is space 46 so forward slash space 46 and then we want source.tar.gz and when you hit return on this you should get a message to say that you've completed the mission I get a message to say I've erred ah, yeah a bit of a difficult one because I really would have liked to have done the cookie stealing in order to get the session to be able to access that page it makes a lot more sense to have to be already authenticated in order to access that area uh, I don't like the fact that you can just increment the users and then change the password to get access and I didn't like the SQL injection either because it's just a direct query anybody could do that I would like to have found a form that you could have escaped to do it I didn't design the challenge though whoever designed it is way more skilled than me so my hat off to him still I it was it's a good challenge to learn some SQL injection and directory traversal I just didn't feel that it was on par with the other ones that we've done so far. The other ones have been great. This is the first one where I've looked at it and I've been like, well, this was a bit lackluster. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, uh, you know, personal bias. What can be learned from it? Well, you know, if you're going to have forms that allow you to change passwords, make sure that you have to be authenticated in order to view them. Uh, directory listings, minimize information disclosure. Don't list out your directories. As a web host, don't suspend someone and just assume that they're bad because they post a blog about hacking. And that's about it, really. Um, I can't wait to do Mission 12. Hopefully, I'll enjoy that one a bit more. Again, this is just my personal preference. I'm sure other people have loved this challenge. Personally, it wasn't for me. But yeah, I will see you next time. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you found it informative, perhaps you should subscribe. And uh, kind regards. Thank you.